Okay. Um, sure. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Andrew's Glenwood, Maryland Morning Devotions. Uh, my name is Jan Brinza, and I will serve as the leader for Morning Devotions today. If anyone is new to the service, uh, know that you are welcome to participate fully. And we are recording this service so that others can access it at a time convenient for them later on. Before we begin, um, how about uh, two volunteers, perhaps, for the reading? I'll um, volunteer. Okay, I heard Jan Brindell. You can be volunteer one. I'll volunteer. Susan, Susan. Scott. Susan. Okay. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. So today we will continue our reading of the book um, titled Sermon on the Mount by Dr. Amy Jill Le Levine, Levine. And today the chapter that we're reading is on page 68 if you have the book and it is titled Which Version? The Our Father is not the total of the prayers Jesus' followers prayed, then or subsequently. Nor are the exact words as important as the intent they express. Luke has an alternative version, Luke 11, 2 through 4. And a third appears in the early Christian text called the Didaka, or the teaching of the 12 apostles. Since we are looking in these six sections at the Sermon on the Mount, we'll look at Matthew's version. On occasion, we'll see the Lucan differences. The fact that there are different versions of the prayer shows us that Jesus' followers remembered it in different ways. The basic meaning is the same in each, but the words differ. And that's good news, since in churches today, depending on the church, the prayer will sound different. Consequently, visitors of one Christian tradition can get very confused when they attend worship in the church of a different Christian tradition. Not only do Matthew and Luke offer different, ver different versions, even in the English speaking world, there are different translations and each has a specific nuance. Perhaps most familiar, Roman Catholic communions have forgive us our trespasses. A number of Protestant churches have forgive us our debts. 
We should not be concerned in this case about who got it right, which implies that someone got it wrong. No one got it wrong. Jesus may have offered different versions of the prayer. Memory is faulty. Translation from Jesus's original Aramaic into the Greek of the New Testament introduced additional nuances, as all translation does. The evan evangelists themselves likely adapted the prayer to fit the needs of their congregations. Early scribes had their own concerns, including harmonizing the two versions, and so on. More, as the English language changed, some Christians updated the translations. Others retained the familiar King James Version. We shall never know what the original was or even if there was an original. We can, however, using historical imagination based on solid linguistic information and knowledge of the time, attempt to reconstruct what this prayer in its Nathan version might have sounded like to Jesus' disciples. What we find is a magnificent Jewish prayer echoed in a number of other Jewish prayers still used to this day, which offers specific connections to the Jewish tradition and at the same time speaks to a universal audience. So if you can voice your comments on the reading or enter them into the chat box. I thought it was interesting that it even that it said, or even if there was an original version. <laughs> I had that in my notes too. I mean, there's gotta be an original, right? Well, we don't know because everybody heard it differently. But there's always an original. Well, I keep thinking, you know, maybe Jesus at different times said it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's true. The, um, the version in Luke is very short. <laughs> I mean, it's only two verses, I think. Um, I know. I was brought up saying, forgive us our debts. You were. Mm -hmm. I was too. I was Presbyterian. Too. Yeah. And then I, the Catholic version, they leave out the last part. Right. Right. Which I never I understood. Just up with that when I go to a wedding, and I'm always the last, you know, I'm all, like the only one saying <laughs> the rest of what I thought the prayer was. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. mm. That happens. Every time I would close my eyes for the prayer, um, I would end and then. You know, there's the for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And I'd open my eyes and be like, if there's more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I noticed she referenced Roman Catholic, which made me think she learned that one from the Episcopalians. Would that we could all have been there. Yeah, those last lines don't appear in Matthew or Luke in my version. <clears throat> I do like the fact that when you go to different churches, um, I, I don't think I've ever been to a synagogue um, service, but different Christian churches, it's kind of uniting, mm -hmm. even though they say it a little different. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of powerful just to know that you're you're saying the same thing with people that you don't even know or don't even worship with on a regular basis or I think that's pretty cool. I mean that was with the bat mitzvah that for Olivia that was amazing the similarity of what they were saying and what we say it was all so consistent. Mm -hmm. Do they say the Lord's Prayer? I, I don't know. Um, I doubt it but the prayers that were used had mm -hmm. were all just very, very, for the most part, very familiar language. Yeah. It's, Which it's, is welcoming. It is. It feels 
unite to like a, yeah yeah like we're we're all one really exactly hmm. which so, seems to be so much of what she's sharing in her book isn't it mm -hmm. yeah it is that's <laughs> that's a message mm -hmm. um does does anyone know what the didaka is <laughs> that's, that's an early version of the that's the earliest uh, teaching. teaching of the church yeah yeah i i looked it up because i didn't know what it was and um and i i did a little um i, I printed out a little excerpt of it but it's a, a it's this this my um my description that i brought up is it says it, a brief anonymous early christian treatise written in coin greek dated by modern scholars to the first or second century. That's pretty cool. And it, it, it's like the very beginning of uh, the teachings of what congregation should do. Mm -hmm. I guess it had the Lord prayer in it. I think tomorrow we'll go deeper into the Lord's prayer itself. Yeah. yeah. So, any other comments? <clears throat> All right, Susan, maybe we should go back to the We're back. Document. Thank you. <laughs> Signing off. <laughs> okay, let us affirm. Let us affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> oh, and also with you. Sorry. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death, into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth 
and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Do we have any prayer requests today or Thanksgiving? For Trish, Sandy, and Kate. For Jane. Terry and Mike. For Jane and Kenneth. And for Dina and everyone at St. Andrews. For all this suffering in Israel and Gaza. Mm -hmm. For those who are still trying to get the vaccine and for those who are trying to maneuver with uh, new guidelines and determine what's best for them. Thanksgiving for the vaccines in our grandchildren yesterday. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Susan and Jan. Yeah, thank you.